this is what I call the modern Victorian. So it's kind of like a mullet. It's modern in the back, but it is all Victorian in the front. So come on, check it out. Basically, what we wanted to do was to bring in a lot of Victorian elements in the front. So you see there's a, a, what we call a cupola. So it's a tower going up. That roof is actually concave and we have diamond steel. There's zinc plated shingles that looks exactly like dragon scales. And that's fitting because our paint is actually dragon's breath. So another thing, you know, you're seeing the white boxes put up everywhere and, and I don't want to talk everywhere, bad about other everywhere. people's work, you know, right, right. but like, I want this to stand out. So the color palette is really dark. Um, I really wanted to go for like spooky, spooky castle vibes here. So a couple of the other things that you're going to see octagonal bay window sets, very Victorian windows with grids. Mm -hmm. um, we have a front porch. I think the front porch is one of the most important features of a Victorian home. Oh, 100%. But what we did is we cantilevered the whole thing. So adding modern elements, I mean, just the amount of structural steel that took is tremendous. And obviously something they wouldn't have done back in the early 1900s. Yeah, you see right here, guys. I mean, this gives a really exquisite <coughs> vibe as soon as you're walking up to this house. Super unique, super novel. And as he mentioned, the scale roof. That's one of my favorite all-time roofs that I've ever seen on a house. And the way he got that curve and that pitch with it, phenomenal, John. Thank you, bro. So yeah, a couple of the other things, um, just little details. We took our regular hardy siding. They did away with the Artisan series. So we had to use regular quarter inch, mm -hmm. but we ripped eight and a half, and now we have a two and a half reveal. So right. it looks a lot more like the old school teardrop siding. We still mitered all that. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the other things, you know, obviously this is a pretty high priced home. We're in about the like, mid to high four million range um we wanted to dress it up with some brick the standing seam metal all those materials that we love in a modern home right. come check out our garage right. door so something else a yeah just hold that down so this is a nice martin cornerstone door it's a it's a solid core steel door insulated on both sides but check this out we took our garage jam and this whole garage jam is steel as well so it's not going to rot. It goes with our aesthetic. But then if you look at it, you have the same reveal on our front door that we have on this garage door jam. And I just think that's an awesome detail. So there's yeah. a bunch of these little Easter eggs kind of hidden around this whole property. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, you don't have the big molding, the big trim. You just see the elements of the building that you want to see in this beautiful brick and the beautiful steel jam. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's simplicity, but like then thinking about it, it's just going to hold up for a long time. 100%. Tell us about this uh, wood up here on the soffit. So Killer. this is a product from Timbertown. It's actually mm -hmm. a pre-finished product, which I actually love. Um, I think Timbertech makes it. Yeah. Um, and it looks kind of like a Shoshugi bond, you know? Mm -hmm. But like, it, it's doing everything there is for me. Like just coming pre-finished, it's kind of naughty. I love it. Yeah, and one more thing that's not in right now, we're gonna do these custom steel ornate railings. That's gonna mirror this curve around this front porch. But so, Another thing we're going to get into, this is a small inner city lot. So we're limited on how much concrete we can put on the lot. That includes porch coverings, decks, also how much square feet we can do in the house. So we utilized attic exemptions, but this right here, I had to do a trade off of putting a big porch in the back as opposed to the front. But again, how can you do a Victorian house without a front porch? Yeah, and let me say on the front porch, guys, I, I'm a good friend with the city historic preservation officer who's recently passed. And he really educated me on front porches and the whole dynamic of how it affects the neighborhood. So we've gotten away from front porches in many neighborhoods and what it's caused is a secluded feel yes, with all your neighbors. Exactly. And if you actually have the, uh, the front porch there and you actually go sit on it, you interact with your neighbors and you gain this whole experience and it's so communal and such a great vibe. So John, I love this front and porch. And I am buddy. that guy. Like I love chilling on my porch and like meeting me the too. neighbors. Me too, know? I'm out in the front yard all the time. So many people are like, dude, put it all in the back, screw that. So coming in, this is like our spooky hallway, like The Shining. <laughs> so what we did here is instead of doing like a really expensive wainscoting all, you know, floor to ceiling, we just did a picture mold. And look at how cool this comes out. You know, we'll have these sconces on the wall, but now it's feeling like a library. So you got the bookcase here to enter the office. Another awesome feature is our picture mold and all of our baseboard goes over our doors. So these yeah. are all on sauce hinges. Yeah, so get a peek what he's hiding in here. Killer. Yeah, the details just keep coming in this one, John. Yeah, it's been fun, that's for yeah. sure. And, and I love how he's taken all these moldings that could be very ornate and very expensive and, and particular, 
and he simplified them. And I really gained a lot of knowledge from this. He just put a nice little rip right in the middle of these, but it's not splittered all the way. It's just a score. And it makes it look like he's put together multiple pieces yes. when in reality, it's just one piece. So less time, less labor, same great look. Thank you. Yeah. And, and honestly, you'll see this all throughout the house. I am just so surprised and like, I love how this came out. We'll be doing, implementing this in a lot of other buildings. Yeah, peek in, peek in there. Come on here. Here's our office. You're good. Smell, smell that walnut. <laughs> Fully paneled in walnut. So we have all these same doors are on sauce hinges as well. So when you close them, they all hide away. Obviously, we have to put our door handle. You got the continuous there. grain and everything. Yep. Or at least it looks like it. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, and exactly. It, another thing about this trim pattern is it's really forgiving because the 10 foot grain mats peaches, pieces, they're super expensive. The lead time is crazy. With this, we're able to put our trim over mm -hmm. all the gaps. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Oh, you good. You good. Um, we're able to put our trim over all the seams, but then this is actually separate pieces. Right. This is eight feet, and then we put that joint right up too. So very efficient as well. So another thing that I just wanted to quickly go over, this is also like one of the most high-tech turnkey smart homes that you'll see. There's speakers in nearly every room. There's a centralized lighting. We're including all cameras, all TVs. It is a turnkey smart home. So that like, mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of people, when they do smart homes, they kind of piece them together and they don't work well. This one, we're gonna drop right in your lap and it is gonna work amazingly. Yeah, totally. I've been checking out a lot of other builders projects lately and that's something I'm feeling like I'm really wanting to up on my game is yeah. the smart home technology. And I was not really feeling it for many years because I was just, I, I don't know, I was i was opposed to it for some reason. Well, I don't think it was there either. Like the technology wasn't really always there. Maybe that was it. I wanted it to feel more intuitive or something, yeah. or more old school, but it's really starting to hit me hard that uh, that smart home technology is, is, is amazing and it makes life a lot cooler and really ups the ante on a high-end home. Well, and think about it, the, the level of our buyers now they're smarter, they're tech company executives, they're people that like, they need this technology with all the work from home. So it's right. like, it's form meeting function, right. you know? Um, yeah. Okay, so you're standing kind of in the dining room, but if you check out this space, it feels entirely different than the front of the house. Remember, we wanted smaller, compartmentalized, lots of smaller windows and openings, kind of that castle Victorian feel. This is where the modern really speaks. So we have our classic open floor plan that everyone loves. We have floor to ceiling glass. We, we have massive picture windows, but they still have that grid. You know, it still gives that feel of that divided light, kind of that ornate feel. Um, the other thing, speakers in the whole ceiling in here, what you don't see, this is gonna be a corner unit of steel and glass for our bar. And then over there by the dining where you just were, that whole entire thing is a curtain wall of steel and glass to kind of divide those spaces visually. Like, we're still compartmentalizing spaces, but we want that open floor pin feel. Yeah, so the old school Victorians were very boxy. So you had walls everywhere, and that's just what was right at that time period. So John's basically giving you the best of both worlds. He's able to give you the division that is able to convert and become open. Exactly. Yeah. So some other elements in this whole house, there's no quartz, there's no granite. It is all marble. Um, it's all polished. I so love it. I know. Arabiscato marble from Italy. Gosh. Don't even want to know what how I how many slabs for. john do you think um in the whole house we have about 12 slabs yeah um this took you know almost four slabs just for here um the other thing that's really tough is when you get some really nice marble it's super hard to miter the edge i mean mm -hmm. it's really brittle so yep. this is actually a laminated front so we have to grain match all of that so right. that you know it doesn't like take your eye that it's split. Right, and I love this olive green color. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. So that's super trendy right now. Um, you know, and a lot of the stuff that we're looking at doing, like that olive green ends up coming right to the top in yes. terms of the color that we would like our kitchen cabinets yeah. to be. So I think it's a great selection. Well, and you know, we have kind of a white backdrop. Mm -hmm. Like that's that more modern feel and now it lets each element pop. Like you see in the range alcove, we have the Arabiscato there. What another couple cool features, these will actually have sconces built into the cabinets. So yeah. like, you know, it just feels like that old school kind of fire spit that you'd cook in in like an yeah. old school castle. Um, why don't we go out back? Cause there's some really cool features that we kind of added cool. back there. Let's do it. Okay, so come on out, check this out. So now 
you're seeing a little more of the stereotypical Austin because this is all attic exempt. Yeah. So we have a big gable with those dormers on the side so we get that ceiling height. But what we did is we dressed this up. Each one of these is individual cedar half moon shingles. It's about fully installed. It's about 20 bucks a foot. This material itself is about $12 a foot. John, I love this material though. Like this, this to me speaks true, authentic Austin. It speaks old school. It speaks, I care. I'm trying to do something special and unique. I'm willing to Thanks, take risks man. and chances. And I freaking love it. Well, and it's just like a place where this could have easily been an afterthought. But it's like, I want, when you're chilling out in the pool and in the backyard, you're looking up and you're like, dude, I have a badass house, Intention, you know? that's right. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm a little torn between like, half the people are like, leave it natural, seal it. The other half are like, let's stain it a little darker. And I'm, I'm just kind of playing with that stuff. I think both would be good options. I had a good opportunity to think about that <clears throat> conversation after I left last time. And I think both could be good routes. So. Oh, good. I'm yeah. glad you think so. Yeah. Um, so the other thing, remember, we had to do the, the trade-off was doing the front porch versus the back patio right, right so what i did is we got a super high end um from texas shade it's like eighteen thousand dollars it's 22 feet wide by 15 feet deep a retractable awning mm -hmm. so oh, it's like wow. a super high end uh like camper <laughs> awning you yeah know? where you're able to kind of extend the square footage in a way that you can actually yes. do within the requirements of the city and you can remove it too exactly. and it's all good for everybody yeah. so really smart what a smart strategy yeah i mean it'll help with rain it'll help with shade and it's still like it's not going to take away and look cheap you know totally totally um the other thing we did because we were out of impervious cover our outdoor kitchen is all floating off of our house so none of it is touching the ground mm -hmm. um we got a yeti cooler there that's stubbed out for the grill and then that's actually outside of the canopy so all those grill fumes won't be caught up under there yeah wonderful yeah. I've, I've seen a lot of steel used elevated to avoid impervious covers issues sometimes with hvac yeah. and condensers and stuff like that but yeah awesome what do you think i should do here like i love the natural nature of the steel but you know there's ugly grinder marks like i mean he probably could have done a little bit better job i don't want to just paint it all black yeah i, I like the idea that we discussed when i was over here last time that adam had of applying that finish to it that kind of allows you to see through somewhat yeah but that it gives it a little bit more of a monochromatic feel but doesn't totally take it away yeah so like that would that be steel bluing yeah that there. would that would be my selection yeah because yeah. man i even i just like like the raw i love when it rusts I've always, every, everybody likes that and when you take that away completely you kind of did a disservice to the exactly. situation yeah, yeah, why you steal them? Right, you know? Totally, totally. All right, cool. Let's go upstairs because that is a totally different ball game. Okay, so as we're walking in to the upstairs, let me just show you these solid wood oak treads. Killer. These are cut in multiple places, but you know, this is Barrett flooring. They killed it on this. We yep. used a bendy board for our riser mm -hmm. and then put an oak veneer on that. But if you look here, here's our engineered wood. Right. Look at how closely this matches oh yeah you can't tell i mean the all. stain match is incredible right, on. right. Yeah. so we're gonna have another ornate steel rail it'll candy cane there yeah but another theme in this house is all of that trim work we're wrapping corners we're continuing that flow through the house so all of our trim work wraps this corner mm -hmm. and then look up as you come up here yeah i love the dynamics of this vault it's incredible with skylights <laughs> it's like a museum on. so normally if you are over 15 foot tall, the city will count it as double square footage. This is actually an attic exemption. There's no restriction on height, mm -hmm. but you just have to make the overall formula work. Yeah, and the reason why that's relevant here is because when you're building in the inner city, there's a lot of rules and you've got to honor the neighbors next to you. You've got to honor the neighbors that have lived here in the past. Height and restrictions. So, yeah, so you want to do it thoughtfully, but you also want to get the most bang for your buck as a developer, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, for what we're paying for dirt, we need to maximize all this. Um, another thing in here, we just did the skylights. We wanted to keep it simple, kind of lofty, but now come check out the master. These French doors now start the master suite. Wow. Come and look at our, come and look at our closet. <laughs> <laughs> there's not much light in here but this is the size of a good bedroom yeah this is great i think big custom closets sell houses 100%. <clears throat> and this is all my trim carpenter just double um one by 12 mdf and when we put the real wood face on there yeah, smart when it's all painted it's going to look great mm -hmm. two speakers in here because why not you're getting ready and you want to jam out to some tunes now come check this out. 
I don't know how good you can see in here, but we have this little closet off the master closet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is like the smart hub of the house. So here's our centralized lighting. This is not a sub panel. The sub panel is on the other side of the house. All the high volt comes in here. It gets transferred to low voltage and all of these controllers tell our lights when to turn on, when to turn off. It also eliminates, we don't need any wall clutter. We could have zero switches if we wanted. So you don't have to locate a switch by the power of the fixture. Yeah, and this, this is right on trend with what I'm seeing in all of the higher end homes. Pretty much everything is having these really high tech AV systems that are the brains of the operation when it comes to lighting control, speakers, music, yeah. you name it. Well, and, and ultimately, like if you want to really talk about it, there was about 50 to 60,000 of extra dollars mm -hmm. that would normally go into like a regular spec. Right. But, uh, you know, now we have all of this over two miles of wire. So this is mm -hmm. where all of our routers are going to go, the cameras, all yeah. of our storage. Like yeah. it's just the smart home of the whole house, right? Yeah. So Amazing. I totally think... Again, we're talking about that buyer. Someone's going to love this. Totally. And myself. I mean, that's how I would live. I'm sold. <laughs> All right. So another thing, let's go into the master bedroom first. For an inner city lot in Zilker Park, you would be hard pressed to find this spacious of a master. Oh, yeah. And we can do that because we'll get into that further. The attic exemption in the back of the house lets us put more square footage here. But what we did very victorian floor grills so yeah. all of our ducts are running through the floor we don't yeah. need to fur down any ceilings for an attic the hvac units are in the closet over here but now we have this really grand space so everything's in your building envelope yeah exactly yeah. wonderful from an efficiency standpoint exactly. performance standpoint comfort standpoint, servicing everything. all totally, that totally. stuff and second fireplace just keeping it like real warm and cozy again we have these octagonal bay windows this is back to the frontward facing, yeah. all casements. I mean, so there's a lot of, like, I really wanted this house to function as well as it forms. I mean, it's a beautiful home, but I want it to live beautifully too, you know? Mm hundred -hmm. percent. Come check out our master bath. I think this is one of my favorite rooms in the house. Wow. If there wasn't enough walnut already, <laughs> now you get your fix. So we have walnut cabinets here. I like how we went with a micro shaker. I mean, I'm kind of getting tired of the shaker everywhere, but yeah. it's, it's still, Shaker has also been around since the yeah. 1800s, you know? Yeah, I like this because it, it, it aligns with the siding outside, the thin yes. reveals with the siding, right? And it, it just kind of, um, it, it just gives some consistency to the home with these these thinner lines. Well, remember, and I really appreciate it. All of our sticking on our walls. Oh, yeah. Like absolutely. all of this works together. Right, right. You know, you look, it's you kind a, of the same detail. Yeah, yeah. now got it, we got have it. a one by around all of our ceilings. So, yeah. like, all of this works together. More Arabiscato marble. Yeah. We're mounting the mirrors and the sconces on the walnuts. You're right. standing in the tub alcove, yeah. but check this out. Full steam shower. Yeah. So this is a stainless steel unit, floor to ceiling, because mm -hmm. we don't want it to corrode from the steam. You got right. two steam heads, two wall mounted with a rain head over the bench. Yeah. So this is going to have that look of that black steel frame with a bunch of glass that mm -hmm. mimics the windows and it is going to look killer and it's going to be great taking a steam shower in yeah. here. Um, yeah, you and, I, you and Tom and I actually talked about that you All of got, us taking a shower in here today. Yes, well that, that too. But, <laughs> but you've got the vent fan in here and we were going over steam showers and stuff like that. And Tom has a pretty cool thought on steam showers that he likes using a window for passive ventilation in addition. So we were both like, yeah, maybe on the next one, maybe yeah. you do an operable window in the steam shower. I'm sure this will work great, but that was kind of but something. But this could have easily been a case. Some of the geeky you know? builder talk that we talk about when we're visiting these projects. And the last thing, if you didn't have enough speakers, there's one in the bathroom and one inside the shower. Wow. We got it loaded. Now I'm going to show you. So right now this lot could only really hold about 2,400 square feet with the size to code. Mm -hmm. We did, we got away with making this house almost 3,100 square feet because of this attic. Yeah, but hold the phone. The, the toilet room guys is in here. So you're not having to look at any toilet in this yeah. space, right? It's over here. That to me is a killer detail. I mean, I spend a lot of time in there, so you got to, you can't be- <laughs> We want to give all. everybody their privacy and we want to look at all the pretty stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so check it out. So now we're entering into, this is that back part of the house with that half moon shingle. So this space to be, to qualify for attic exempt to not count against our floor to area ratio has to, 51% of the space has to be seven feet or below. 
There's a bunch of other rules. We kind of went over that in more detail, but we won't get into all that today. But why I love this space, A, how we worked it, we still have eight O doors. Totally. Right? So like, it doesn't yeah. feel small. This is going to be- Lots of I, articulation. Yeah, right. So, but think about like the Victorian attics, you know, mm -hmm. there's all those funky ceilings and there's so much going on and, and it feels so intimate. And I think this totally captures that. Yeah, I've gotten to work on historic Victorian homes that have been, you know, over 140 years old here in Austin. And it pretty much mimics the exact same feel of all these compartmentalized rooms up at the top yeah. that are so unique and so special in that yes. old Victorian architecture. Yeah, and I, and I love that. And um, so the other thing is we have our two bedrooms here. Yeah. So like kids' beds, that was the master. Come check out our bathroom. The secondary bath is badass. Mm -hmm. Tile all the way to the ceiling. We got two skylights in here. And then this is an opal white marble. God, that's pretty. Super translucent. Gosh. It's like a glacier. Yeah. So get, check this out. This wow. isn't in just yet. But what we're doing, so I love this. When you're sitting and bathing your kids, you got a bench to kind of chill mm -hmm. on. Sure. But this whole tub deck is gonna be covered in marble, and then that's gonna waterfall the front apron down to the right, floor. Right, right. So just marble on marble on marble. Don't show my bad tub protection, please. <laughs> that was my tip to John last time I was yeah. here. Obviously he didn't listen, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll learn one day. I've touched these up too many damn times. Um, oh. Well, cool, man. Um, yeah, let's, let's kind of get out of this tight space. I just want to say thanks to everyone and dude, it's been such a pleasure meeting you Absolutely. and like, I've learned so much from you, obviously all your videos and it's like, it's so cool to collaborate and I just really appreciate you having me on. Thank you so much. I, I'm, I'm really trying to go for with all my content, creating a community here in Austin and it's not only because I want to spotlight others or help out others. It's also for my own selfish reasons of wanting to learn from people like you and become inspired from people like you that are going and going hard, doing big things that I enjoy. Dude, you're so, making me blush over so here, it, it, It's just nothing but a pleasure to be part of this community and part of this unique fraternity. And I look forward to bringing yes. more people into this and sharing them with the world and bringing value to people's lives. So Hell thank you, yes, bro. brother. Appreciate you. Yeah. Um, you can check us out. We have our own YouTube channel at Revent Builds. You can also check me out, John Joff underscore the builder on, builder on Instagram. Thank you guys. That's right. And I've got some stuff coming out on Design Build Diaries on YouTube. So there's some fresh content. We've also got some rebranding. ESS Design Build is gone and we're all render now. So clean. Design Build developed. So y'all stay tuned for all that. Adios amigos. So another space that I really wanted to show y'all, again, I want it to function as well as it forms. You come in through the garage, you're throwing all your dirty clothes in your wash. Now you're putting all your groceries on your counter. This is a full butler's pantry because with how the cabinets are in the kitchen, they kind of sit on top of the countertop. So you don't have as much working space. You have the island, but this is where all of your appliances are going to go. The microwaves here, you have a utility sink, tons of storage. This is like the heart of the home, especially like my wife was like, you need to freaking have this. So I think all the people that are actually going to use their houses are going to love this space. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. See you soon.